So firstly, the, the path to diagnosis, um, what happens a lot is when you see your, you know, your, your regular pediatrician and it's the parent that starts voicing concerns most of the time. And physicians are, are usually quick to brush that off and say, you know, every child develops differently. And if they're not doing this at their next well visit, you know, we'll address it then. I think you really need to listen to, you know, predominantly it's moms, right? So you really need to listen to the parent. And if you have a parent that's telling you their baby is not eating or is having difficulty eating and is not sleeping, you know, those should be huge red flags because babies naturally eat and sleep. Um, children with angel men have a struggle in both those areas as, as infants. So, um, when you have a parent that has a child that's having difficulty with the three things babies are, you know, known to do, eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom, you know, that should be a red flag. And those are usually coupled with even very early other signs, um, you know, some more gross motor type of signs at that, you know, at those very early, you know, up to three months old, three to six months old. Um, you know, a lot of pediatricians don't want to you know, they just don't want to believe that this poor parent has a child with a genetic disorder. But the sooner you find out, the better off for the child to get into those necessary therapies. So my advice to physicians is, is listen to the parent. If the parent is saying there's something not right here, especially if it's not their first child, um, you should listen to them. And, and you should figure out why that child is having difficulties in those areas. But it's usually sleep, eating, and, um, and you know, and bowel issues and those are three things that come naturally to a baby so if a parent is telling you my baby is not doing those three things you should you should listen carefully and try and figure out why and then as far as a physician speaking to a parent of a child with angelman unless you have extensive experience you should say right from the get-go i don't have a lot of experience with this but i'm willing to learn together you know, as a team and do what's, what's, you know, in your baby's best interest. Um, the most insulting thing for parents is when a physician who knows so little about it will speak with some type of authority. Um, it, you know, it's, you know, it's very insulting. It's better to say, I don't, I don't really know. I need to do some research. I'm willing to work with you as a team to do the, what's best for your child. Um, you know, aim for the stars. Let's see what happens. There's nothing is set in stone. Every child is unique. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Bedside manner goes a long way. Um, this parent is going to be devastated regardless. This is devastating news to get when you get this diagnosis. Um, having a good bedside manner and being committed to finding out everything you can um, that you don't know, um, you know, goes a long way.